Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. My name is Anne Greis and I welcome you to my very first tutorial. If you regularly develop Android apps or mobile apps in general, you may already face this problem that people don't directly understand your app. Some people may argue that's a UX problem and yeah, let's ignore that tip for now. And another solution is to use um, some kind of tooltip or spotlight in your app. Spotlight in this context means that you highlight specific parts of your app and explain them with a short text or something like that. So in the old ways of defining Android layouts, you had the option to directly access specific views and get the global position of that object. And then you could just overlay these objects with um, yeah, some kind of spotlight or adjust the text. But how can we do that in Android's Jetpack Compose? Because we don't have the option to directly access composables in this case anymore, because we don't have any ID or something like that. But don't worry, there is an option. But before, before we start with um, diving into the code, let's first look at an example. So, as you can see, we have a spotlight here that highlights a specific button in this very complex layout. So when I uh, scroll down, you can see that the spotlight follows this uh, button. And yeah, you could use this for any other UI element in this app or any other app. And yeah, let's take a look at how we can implement that. As I mentioned, there is no option to directly access a composable via ID, uh, except in some test cases. But don't worry, there is an option. We can just use a modifier that is called on globally positioned. And this modifier allows us to receive a layout coordinates object that, on the other hand, contains some parameters like the current size of the composable or if it's attached to the view hierarchy tree or um, yeah, the coordinates we will later use, actually. So, because we want to draw over this whole content here, we will just use a callback that is called on target composable layout coordinates updated and it receives that um, object we talked about layout coordinate the class and returns unit now we can just use this function as an input parameter and we'll receive all the updates this example button receives as soon as it is laid out so now we just need to pass in here the new function with uh, lambda function and we get the layer coordinates and now we can work with that object so the only thing we really need at the end is the x and y position of our button. So that will be the thing we will remember us and save it in a variable. So because we want to update it, we make this variable as in var and call it current uh, target composable coordinates. And we use a remember function immutable state of and use an int offset and we initialize it with a zero zero one more import that's kind of an IDE bug and let's find an explicit type here so you see it's an int offset and yeah now as we just saw in the um, layout coordinates object, we can check if our composable is attached to the view hierarchy 
by using the is attached. If that is true, we will use the layout coordinates dot position in root to get the current offset of that object. As you can see here, it returns the offset. So, but if that is not the case, we will use our initial int offset by zero zero. And yeah, we can now use a, a scope function with. Now we are in the offset scope and we can just use all the values from that offset. So we can say int offset and use x and that is a float therefore we round it to an inch and also the y that will be also round to an int now <clears throat> we have our current target composable oops that will just receive that update so it's either the int x and y from the layout coordinates or uh, or this int offset now that we have our coordinates we can move on to displaying the actual spotlight we saw just in our example so now that we have our current target composable coordinates we can proceed with actually showing our spotlight and that is the next thing we were going to do because that we will create a new composable and call it spotlight and now we want to draw something onto the screen using the canvas API. So we create a new canvas composable and fill the whole screen with it. And the next thing we need to do is use this on draw variable and add a lambda function. And inside that lambda function, we have the draw scope, with, uh, which will give us access onto the Canvas API. So now the next thing we need to do is drawing a punch hole into a rectangle, which will be then the spotlight. And how can we do that? The first thing we need to do is to draw our path that will be punched out out of the actual rectangle at the end. So we do that by using a so-called um, path and we use the Android X Compose UI graphics path for that. And then we use an apply scope function. So we have access to that initiated uh, path object. And now we add an oval and this oval will be of a rect which on the other hand receive a center which we'll fill in a second and a radius and this radius takes um, the size of our canvas um, then to be more specific the min dimension which is the smaller side of the canvas so uh, in our case the width and we divide that by two and then also subtract uh, 16 dp a small margin and convert that to pixel because we need a float so now we just need to think about where to position this object or to more specific the spotlight um because we want to center it in right in the middle we just need to take our position, transform it to an offset because the center needs an offset. And the Y position should be right, you know, because we, we got the position from the composable itself. And now we just need to calculate the middle of the screen, which will be done by first copying that object. And that's just a shadow copy, don't worry. And we use X to be updated and take the size of our canvas, which is equivalent to our screen because we use the max size and it's not constrained by anything. And use here the width and divide it by two. 
So now that we are done with that, we are going to use another function that is called clip path. And that will be responsible for actually punching out our spotlight path. And now that's why we add that spotlight path to as path object. And next we have our clip op that tells this uh, extension function how it should punch it out. We use the intersect. And finally, we have here the draw scope, which will be um, just uh, wrecked, which on uh, which will just be a solid color, um, just black for now. And yeah, that's it. That is really the part for the spotlight. So now we just want to add one single thing and that is the transparency and also the animation you saw at the beginning. Because it's just an illusion, uh, the spotlight never really goes away, just the color changes, we will fake a little bit. And we start by receiving the current screen height which um, can be easily received by using the local density current and we use once again the width scope function and now we can also use the local configuration current use the screen height and dp say two pixel and now we have fine and have the screen height in pixel. Let's quickly add the respective type so we don't forget it. And now the next thing is to animate our background color. So at the moment we just have this color black, but we wanna add a, um, a transparency to that. But how can we do that? We use um, copy once again and the alpha value and now we will animate that so for animating a, a float value we will just need a target value target alpha value and we set that to let's say um, 0 0.8 8f and that is the case when we are in when when the object or to be more specific the button is visible on the screen so how can we know that our target composable is currently visible because we have the screen height of the actual device here and also the position, which takes also this quotable component into consideration, we can just check if the current position is contained between 0 and the screen height. So we just say position y to uh, round, uh, uh, sorry, in zero until screen height in pixel round to int and that will tell us if the our target composable is currently visible and in that case our target alpha value of our black color will be set to 0 0.78 and uh, that's a little bit dimmed you may know that from dialog backgrounds, for example, and if it's out of scope, the alpha value will be set to zero and the spotlight will be invisible. So now we just need uh, another value called background alpha and use a delegate keyword um, animate float as state. The target value is just calculated one and we will just bring that into a new line and also use the animation spec 
which will just get a tween, which will on the other hand will just receive a duration in milliseconds. And now that we have both of these values, we are fine and yeah, we just needed to set that also to float. Sorry for that. And let's define that also. Now we just need to add this value to our background. And if you just start your app, you will see that you receive the same effect as I showed you at the beginning. Thank you for watching my tutorial. I hope you had some fun and also learned something. Follow me on my Medium blog, subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell, and I hope you see to see you the next time. Ciao.